yeah let's uh, get started again so now uh, we wanted to check what is the distribution of the statistic we have here like the our statistic is the square difference between the classes of all the classes between their empirical values and the expected empirical frequency and their expected frequency normalized by their empirical frequency so to this to do this sorry this is k here we are going to use our likelihood we can use a likelihood test let's try to um, check whether uh, my hypothesis my hypothesis is null hypothesis is like a theta i is whether this is equals to theta i is 0 for all i and alternate hypothesis this is not equals to for some i okay so to check this hypothesis i can go and use my log likelihood ratio test so in the log likelihood ratio test this being a discrete uh, valued function so how i'm going to get this let's quickly write this so my l of theta 1 theta 2 up to theta of n can be written as uh, this is basically j number of samples and then i equals to 1 to k that is like a theta 1 indicator that xi uh, sorry xj equals to 1 right so this is for each sample i'm going to check and uh, this is uh, going to be i and this is going to be xj equals to i now we know that if i are going to expand this i will see that theta i is going to be exponented to a one a phi number of times and that is why i am going to get this quantity to be simply product of i1 to k theta of fi okay but however i know that there is an this uh, likelihood function i want under the condition that my summation of fi's has to be n this is naturally it has to hold but also i want this theta i should be such that they add up to one because these are the probabilities of the various classes which need to add up to one if I use my likelihood likelihood estimator, one can see that when I optimize this over my thetas under these constraints, I will end up getting theta i hats to be fi by n. This is basically the empirical frequency of my class i. Now, by taking the likelihood ratio test, if you recall, the numerator is going to be simply L computed at uh, my null hypothesis parameters which are theta zeros and um, my denominator is going to be the optimal value of l over my possible parameter space which is theta hat l of theta hat so by simplifying that i get this and now further if i am going to take uh, minus 2 log of this i am going to get this expression now our claim is or one can show that this q sorry this 2 log t has chi square distribution with k minus of 1 degrees so this is one can show now what we are going to observe is this minus 2 log t we have this is almost same as q which is the phi minus ei minus square divided by ei okay now or we are going to say this is approximately equal to now the question is why this is true okay let's rewrite the expression for log t here 
my 2 log t we just saw that this is going to minus 2 i 1 to k f of i log of theta i sorry theta i 0 minus log of uh, what is that we have here oh I have uh, I, I am going to use this slide instead of that so we want to show that minus 2 log t is almost same as q which is uh, oh no summation f i minus e i square by e i plus to 1 2 k now let's first write expression for minus 2 log t we have this we had argued that this is nothing but minus 2 i equals to 1 to n sorry k f i uh, of log of theta i 0 minus log of f i by n okay let me uh, rewrite this minus 2 i equals to 1 to k f i log theta i n minus log this I'm going to write it as so this is like theta 0 I'm going to write it as theta hat okay now where I've just replaced this by this for simplicity now let's try to understand how this expression looks like by using our uh, Taylor expansions applying Taylor's series expansion around the point theta i hat so then I am going to get this theta i 0 equals to theta i hat plus theta i 0 minus theta i hat and then I need to take the first derivative of this that is 1 upon theta i hat plus theta i 0 minus theta i hat squared then 2 factorial right and then the second derivative of this which is minus 1 upon theta i hat square and there will be some additional terms here which I am going to simply write it as j equals to 3 to infinity which are like theta i 0 minus theta i hat 3 j factorial times the uh, uh, n time derivative of I am going to just write n time derivative of and this when I write this is like nth sorry j the derivative of your uh, uh, log of theta i oh, look, uh, let's see what is the nth time derivative of this mm, j -th derivative of this so I am going to write some let's say this is like I am simply going to write uh, j -th derivative of your log theta i 0 computed at theta i hat okay so now if I simply so I am going to write this entire quantity now as if I am going to write it as theta i 0 minus log of theta i hat this is going to be simply theta i hat minus theta i hat divided by 1 upon theta i hat plus now there is a minus here theta i 0 theta i hat square divided by 2 factorial 1 upon theta at i square and this rest of the terms I am going to simply write it as epsilon okay now one thing to notice here is let's 
get the terms back here. Uh, let me start from here, minus 2. Okay. Now also when I plug in back, I will try to replace uh, theta i by its corresponding quantity. I 1 to k, I have epsilon. And now this is like theta i hat. But theta i, sorry, this is supposed to be uh, theta 0 here theta i 0 and theta i hat I know that this is f i by n divided by this is also uh, then this is going to get it like like this and then minus theta i 0 I'm going to keep this as it is but this one I'm going to write it as n square by f i square uh, okay, uh, maybe I should write this entire thing like this um, divided by 2 factorial and of course there is a minus 2 equals to 1 to k phi and epsilon i term here. Okay, so now further let's do this simple computation and now if you do this what I'm going to get is phi times theta i 0 and uh, this gets this quantity and uh, I am going to get uh, minus n and n and I am going to get this fi here okay and uh, if you further simplify this quantity here, uh, this is going to be theta i uh, 0 minus theta i hat and uh, this 1 f this is going to be f and uh, I still have this n square here. Okay, now let's quickly compute this now I see that if I have this 2 square I have this oh I think I made one computation mistake here this should be n here instead of um, f here so this is fine and uh, this is fine here so the only part was this was a mistake here so this was like uh, uh, f f get cancelled this was like n theta i naught now if you notice this part now I'm going to expand start expanding this summation by taking inside so the first term is um, 2 n into summation theta i 0 minus summation of f i and this is the first part now the second part is you know, so there is uh, something extra which I'm still retaining as it is minus there is also 2 here. Now if I see this uh, 1f has been knocked off 1f remains and uh, I am now going to write uh, expand this this is going to be minus minus is going to be 2 and uh, summation theta i so now I am going to write this as f i by n into n square by f i minus still something okay now quickly see this so what we have now what we have is basically 2 times log of t is equals to so let me write this uh, entire thing Okay, maybe before I go here, maybe just let me see some make some space here and write. Okay, now let's see that mm. this quantity is going to be n and this is going to be 1. So this quantity gets knocked off. Okay, so now if I simplify this, I'm going to get it as 2 times summation uh, n theta i minus f i and n fi into n square plus a term here okay 
So, what we now had is basically let me again just uh, recap this we have and also there was a 2 here so I am going to do this 2 gets knocked off and uh, I have in the denominator n square here because that is what came and this n square gets knocked off with this and what I'll, I will end up is summation n theta i 0 minus f i square divided by times f i n by yeah uh, so this one this one like a whole square here and I had this square here and uh, when I computed this n square is knocked off with this but in the denominator I am getting f i whereas I am anticipating e i in this let me check what is the mistake I made so as of now I don't see any mistake here so what I have is mm, minus n theta i f i plus and I have this minus 2 this f i epsilon i i equals to 1 to k here okay and now I know that n theta i is exactly equals to the e i e i minus f i square divided by f i and this 2 i equals to 1 to k f i epsilon square and now if you recall f i has the term theta i 0 divided by f i by n right it has the term maybe raised to the power n and uh, many terms like uh, has terms uh, for n greater than yeah has uh, has many terms like this terms and now for uh, so what was that like the, we have this uh, terms like this which is uh, yeah it was like j uh, greater than or equals to 3 and we notice that as n tends to infinity by law of large number we know that f i by n is going to converge to 0. So because of that all when n tends to infinity this epsilon i is going to converge to 0 and that's why we can say that as n tends to infinity minus 2 log of t is approximately or in fact is equals to summation e i minus f i square by e i which is exactly our q matrix and since we already argued that minus 2 log t is q distributed is uh, chi square distributed with k minus stream we can say that we can approximate q also to have chi square k minus 1 degrees of freedom okay so i hope uh, so there is a small difference here the way we wrote uh, this q here where our denominator is vi but what we got on here is in the denominator as fi so please check this thing and make sure that whether what we actually wanted uh, q here to be one the one with the denominator fi or i made any calculation mistakes in this please uh, do verify that okay fine now how to apply this we now just saw that whenever I have a data and I need to do Q test all I need to do was compute my statistic Q and check whether it is greater than or equal to Z alpha to get an alpha significance test. To quickly do that let us look into one example. Let us say that uh, our quality control engineering has taken 50 samples of size 13. So, a quality engineering is gathering 
let us say this is sample 1 where he is taking 13 samples from this is like a one batch and similarly he take another lot of 13 samples from the production process like that he does 50 batches and out of in each of these batches he looks the number of defects for the samples and uh, this table gives the number of defects that he has observed in how many in uh, how many defects here are uh, going to observe in this uh, samples of batch size 13 and uh, we want to test a null hypothesis at, at level 0 0.05 whether uh, the defects are going to follow either poison or uh, binomial distribution. I am going to do the exercise computation for the binomial distribution and uh, you can try out similarly for the binomial. So notice that we have only given by Poisson distribution and we do not know the value of lambda. We are only given this. And what we are told is in a 0 defect were found in 10 of these batches. Only one defect was found in 24 of them, two defects are found in 10 like that and uh, six or more defects were not found in any of the samples. Now notice that the number of classes we have is only this now 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that is my classes are actually 7 here right starting from 0, 1 like this. Now for the poison distribution I know it has the shape this for its uh, probability mass function here my lambda is not known but I can estimate lambda from the samples. So how can I estimate lambda from the samples? I have this value that the expected value I know 0 defects were found in 10 and uh, 1 defect in 24, 2 in 10, 3 in 4, 4 in 1 and uh, in 1. So notice that even though I said k equals to 7 here but in none of the samples I found any uh, like 6 or more defects. So that means basically the number of possible values of the number of defects that are being taken as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 because of that my actual distinct classes are only 5 or like 6 here including the value of 0 I get my total number of 6 because I am never observing 6 or more uh, defects so I do not need to take that as one of the class. Okay, Now I have this value divided by total number of samples is 50 if you compute this value you are going to get the value of lambda hat. Whatever that lambda hat you can find out and now how you are going to compute theta i hat 0. The theta hat 0 you are going to compute as hmm. mm, you are going to compute as 50 into probability that x i equals to 0 which is 50 into e to the power minus lambda hat lambda hat into i oh sorry i here divided by i factorial whatever that comes. So that is the value uh, oh sorry this is a theta hat is simply the probability right. So you can uh, calculate this and that is what um, you know, we have done here and uh, you see that for uh, lamb for uh, theta i when i is 0 this is like e to the power uh, minus lambda hat it is simply and uh, I think whatever this computes I think here uh, you can quickly compute 24 plus 20 plus 12 
plus 4 plus 5 that is um, 24 36 4 plus 5 40 45 okay whatever the value of uh, lambda hat you get you can plug in and uh, I just uh, verify that indeed I calculated it correctly here once you plug in this value we are going to get this uh, theta hat values and the EI values is nothing but n into theta I values here uh, okay just just I want to revisit this it's okay 0 is observed 10 and 1 into 24 just let me see if I have this here Twenty-four, twenty, twelve, four, and five. Twenty-four. This is forty. Forty-four. Fifty-six. This is fifty-six plus four and five. Fifty. So you will end up this value to be equals to total sixty-five by fifty, which is like um, uh, one point three. And in fact, you can see that minus one point three is. Uh, point uh, if you see that this is exactly equals to 0.2735 and uh, based on this computation you can compute what is uh, e bar here and similarly you can compute all of this and notice that when you do this for this class 5 you are ending with a value 0 0.5 which is less than 1 and the frequency can't be the count physically here basically you are counting the number of expected frequency of a class which can't be less than one so we may want to merge these two things and uh, this is going to give us a value of 2.1 uh, what is this um, phi 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 am i correct phi 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 okay and uh, then do the recomputation so basically we further restricted my uh, I did one more grouping here so and now I can only compute basically I kind of ignoring this class as well now and now based on that I can compute as required f minus e bar and I'm going to get this value and when I'm going to sum that that is going to give me value now if you want to check this critical value at 0 0.05 I need to first decide what is the threshold I should set in this case it so happens that we need to take the critical value from chi square distribution with um, 3 degrees of freedom and I will just uh, comment about why this is 3 here and this value happens to be 7.81 and uh, whatever the value we have obtained Q value 0 0.360 here is going to be less than 7.81 so in this case that's why we are not going to reject this null hypothesis as per our criteria now the question is why we take chi square distribution with three degrees of freedom this is because first of all we started with k equals to six here right and we need to take the degrees of freedom to k minus one but we further reduce the class here because my e hat happens to be less than one for my class phi or more so i needed to reduce my class one further and I also I had an estimation for this lambda and that will also reduce my thing 1 that is why the 6 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 which is 3 which I am taken as my degrees of freedom okay I hope this clarifies and uh, similarly you can compute uh, this test for the binomial distribution also you will see that even the binomial test for the binomial also say that your null hypothesis is not rejected so both our tests say that both of this can't be rejected and uh, obviously both can't be correct so it's in this case we can conclude that our samples are not enough to say conclusively which one is possibly to be rejected okay so this is all about um, how to use uh, your chi square distribution now um, we'll talk about uh, the other tests